Well, that seems pretty straightforward. It is a little more complicated than that, but let's see what it does take to get the steps and more installed on the RV7A, this time on Ryan Flies. The next steps are to fit these ribs into place. Now these ribs are the F6111 ribs, and I have learned to have a healthy amount of fear of parts that start with six. Again, I believe parts that start with six are holdovers from the RV6 and are rarely formed to the precision or completeness of parts that start with seven. This piece being no exception. Let's go take a look at how it fits uh, right out of the box on the plane. It's supposed to go in, well, something like this. Uh, so fits is a term I would use loosely. Um, this is supposed to be cut, fluted, and twisted to get it into place. Uh, and they, they tell you to see drawing 41, which I don't have. I believe it will be provided in the finishing kit. I did look it up online. It doesn't provide a whole lot of guidance as far as where to cut, flute, and or twist this thing. Let's see if there's any uh, tips online. And I will start to mark this thing up and make the adjustments that I believe are necessary to get it to fit. I really don't know where to begin with this thing. All right, thank you, uh, the Vans Forum and Mike Hoover uh, with a build log from about 20 years ago uh, provides some pretty decent instructions. The funny part about this is I'm reading comments that are like 20 years old online uh, about this part and someone notes a typo that are, is in the instructions where they call the 706 bulkhead the 705 bulkhead and it's still here 20 years later. We haven't changed that. We haven't fixed it. 705. Let's get moving on this. All right, I got a rough center line. Emphasis on rough. Uh, it's close. Now we're just gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. So far, the advice provided seems to be working out surprisingly well. That advice, don't cut it. Don't flute it. Just start at the bottom and work up. Uh, so I got it on um, and it was a lot of work, a lot of fine tuning, but I actually had a lot of fun with it. And I think it was that fine tuning and getting it perfect. All I used, 10 snips and a file. Um, and after probably uh, more than a dozen, maybe even two dozen uh, on and off and on and off and rounds of adjustment, um, it fits great as you can see. Uh, now, I actually happen to have a spare 6111. I think I misreported on my inventory. And so you can see here, what it looks like before and after. Not a lot of change. And so uh, that's why I understand now why so many people had to order uh, a second um, when they went trimming, uh, where Van says to go ahead and trim it to size. There, that really shouldn't, that's a misappropriation of the word trim. It should just be fine tune uh, or file or grind. Um, so uh, off to the right side and we'll, uh, have a head start on this one. I'll try to translate as many of the adjustments I made. Go ahead and trim it off and we'll do the same thing.
Just a little bit of fine tuning and that part is done. The second one, very easy. Well, it's fitting pretty freaking good, and I have all of my holes drilled, side from two here. And the reason is, this hole was really, really close to this rivet. And I've decided, well, I'm just gonna drill this rivet out. I'm going to enlarge the hole for a number three rivet, and I'm gonna line these two rivets up with where that hole is, combining the attach rivet for this and this skin rivet here. Shouldn't be a problem, and it's gonna allow for that exact spacing I'm looking for on the exterior of the plane. That when you, when you look at this, you don't have this rivet that's like hanging out in no man's land because I was trying to dodge this one. So you can see a line of rivets where I landed them right down the flange and it's better than I could have asked for. It's exactly what I wanted and it's why I did this in the manner that I did. The only thing I have to do now is actually match drill one of those back through the plate. That's that rivet I drilled out. So I got the one back drilled. I think you can see why I would want to reuse that rivet hole. Um, the spacing is just, it's really nice. It's, it works out well. So. I'm going to pop the one next to it, take it back over the airplane, match drill that to the airplane. After that, I can go ahead and get the uh, plastic mount made and, and fit for the inside of the plane.
stressed about this decision probably more than I should have. Uh, in fact, I went out and I got some different primer, which I used on the plane. Uh, but ultimately, I wanted the strength of the Axo on this step. Uh, the unfortunate part is I have this, this bright green, this Shrek green color um, as a result. But at least, at least you can tell my plane from others. Or maybe others have done the same, I don't know. The step is in, um, and it uh, it came out fantastic. Uh, I don't know how I managed to get it to fit the contours of the side so well. That's not true. I do. In fact, even my neighbors do. It was hours and hours and hours of pounding with a hammer. Once the rivets were set, nothing's like pulling or buckling the metal at all. It's stout. Now, I won't be using it to get in and out of the aircraft because it's going to put some undue leverage on this whole uh, body without having a, a landing gear and a wheel sticking out to support that. It, it doesn't seem wise to me to try and use the step, which is a little unfortunate because now the only purpose it's going to serve is to bust up my shins and knee. So I'm going to have to get some padding on this. Um, but it's another piece of the, of the airplane that I'm really, really happy with how it came out. Like always, one down, one to go. Thank you.